It's a beautiful house to be in today with such beautiful people. Um, let me, first of all, say that it's wonderful to be part of this great family. Yeah. Uh, a family that we have put together, right, um, over the years. I want to first of all express to you that I still sometimes uh, haven't even personally internalized or grasp of itself, the expansiveness mm -hmm. of who we are and what we represent, the depth and the breadth of who we are and what we represent. We should understand that in my 21 years in Congress, mm -hmm. I have never seen legislation supported by such a deep, broad coalition of Americans as the one we've been able to. The most important thing is before you use power to understand just how much power you have. And it's a lot. And if you believe in it, now if you, you know how it is, if we show up, la gente no te creen, right? They know it. They go, oh, he's just going through the motions. But if people believe, you transmit, right, that power and that belief through your words to them. And never before has it been more important that we have strength to our words and that people believe that what we are saying. We had an incredible victory mm -hmm. yesterday. <laughs> and let me say that sooner than later, we're going to have another victory in the house. I want to share with you that I just came from a meeting uh, with uh, Congressman Johnson and Congressman Carter and Congressman diaz Balart. They reaffirmed, notwithstanding the bills that are being carried through the Judiciary Committee by Chairman Goodlatte, mm -hmm. they reaffirmed that they want a comprehensive immigration reform bill that leads to American citizenship and the safety and prosperity. Because we need to think strategically because we know what tactics we're going to use. Now, there's going to be a great debate, but we have to know where it is we eventually want to arrive at. Because if we haven't figured that out, we're going to miss a lot of opportunities and we're going to expend energy unnecessarily and maybe harmfully mm. to our cause. So let's figure. Let me tell you just as a suggestion, as I come here, I am so honored and so privileged to address you because I know what you represent across this country. The greatest good for the greatest number of immigrants in this country. I never thought that that class in uh, philosophy was going to be so oh. useful. <laughs> that the professor who stressed utilitarianism was going to come be so useful. But I think there is a great uh, deal to be, uh, to be understood by that. The greatest good for the greatest number of people. That's what we need to understand. That we get a bill that comes out of the House of Representatives that represents our values, that does the greatest good for the greatest number of people, and then we go to conference. Because in conference, you have already created a conference in where half of the conference is for comprehensive immigration reform and a full path to American citizens. You have created a conference. Remember, it's like you're sending a dozen people and half of them are already with you. And let me tell you, we're going to take another half to work with them so that we can come out of there with a bill that the President of the United States can proudly sign and we can add this nightmare that 11 million people in this country live. Let us always remember what this is all about. What fundamentally motivates us, moves us, drives us each and every day. 
And I know for any sale, and for everybody in this room, it's 1,200 victims of the process of deportation and a broken immigration system. It's 300 kids today, tomorrow, and the next day, and every day until we fix it, that are left without a mom or a dad. I have to tell you, every day it breaks my heart. And every day I think about it. And that's what motivates me. I leave my house to come here every week. But when I leave my house, my wife knows I'm coming home. My children know I'm coming home. It's time to say to millions of American citizen children and others that are still undocumented that when their mommy and their papi leaves, they're coming home. That must be our goal, and we can never think of another. We must put that. pages of legislation that will be written, but we need to guarantee that at the end, that we take them and we put them in a safe place. They're not in a safe place today. They're not in a safe place today. We need to put them in a safe place, right? So that tomorrow and the next day and the next day they are no longer. I don't know how many of you saw Frontline this week, but many of us already know because I've been out with the United Farm Workers in Salinas. And I went out to Oregon, and I've been out to Washington State, and I've been to the Citrus Groves of Florida, and in each and every one of those situations where I've met with farm worker women, you think we cannot protect our women in the armed forces of the United States. I want you to simply think, if we cannot protect the women in the armed forces of the United States, Imagine how unprotected and abused the women are in the fields of this nation. Mm. We must bring them out of that abusive situation that they live in. Give them the working documents and the security that they need through a legalization program so that then they can call the authorities and put those men that have abused them and exploited them in jail where they deserve. simply regulating a workforce, but giving people dignity, respect, and protection. The protection that comes by being legally in the United States of America. I want to say it's going to be tough. We're going to have a lot of challenges. It's going to be tough. But I just want to come here this afternoon to say, you know what? I got a job to do in the Congress of the United States. But I also feel I have a responsibility to be first and foremost in helping you. So I've come here to tell the Alliance anything I can do. I'm already preparing to go to Washington State. I'm already preparing to go to Oregon. I'm already preparing to go to California. I'm already preparing to go to Florida. I have an itinerary for New York. You tell me where else we have to stand together and I will be here with you. You know, how am I going to come and talk to you and expect you to take me seriously if I don't take my own life, right, and take my own time and tell you how committed I am to you at this particular time? So I hope that we can do this. Because look, there's going to be people we need to protest. And then there are going to be people in the Republican Party that we're going to need to show some love for. Yes. Because this is about persuading people. Hello, Booth, I remember I went out there and used to knock on people and persuade people to vote for Harold Washington. I used to go persuade people. Now that people I just ignore because I know that they were useless. <laughs> and there are some Congress people that are going to be useless in this process. But let me tell you, there are dozens of Republican congressmen who have to feel
knock on their doors and say, hey, brother, did you know what Steve King said about dreamers and why he was doing that? You know, sometimes you have to explain things to people. You have to talk to people. There'll be room for protesting, but there'll also be room for us to show a presence. And I think we need to have in our arsenal every tool disposable to us because it is what the undocumented deserve. That we show the flexibility and the mobility to move and to design a program that attracts people to us. So why did I begin, you probably ask yourself, with the fact that three Republicans would say we're still committed? Because I want you to move those Republicans. And I want you to move them to a place where we build 218 votes. The fact is, there are 201 Democrats. That still puts the 17 short. You need to build a coalition, and we need a place for Paul Ryan to make home on the issue of immigration. We need a place for Mr. Grimm from New York to make immigration a place where he can support. And dozens of others that you know that have spoken about the issue. So now when you go and visit them and they say, okay, I'm with you, you tell them, yes, when you sign up for this bill, you have demonstrated you are with us, number one. And number two, if you attack and they have no safe harbor to go to politically, a place where you can say, I respect you now, you are with us, then you might just drive them into the hands of the xenophobes that are already controlling the Republican Party. You know what? We've got to make sure that people understand. Right now, they're afraid of a certain group of voters. We have to teach them and have them understand that there are another group of voters that they should fear also even more if you do not bring about comprehensive immigration reform. And that the consequences of inaction are going to be terrible, the price to pay. They need to understand that. So we need to persuade people with love, with, with being rational with them, with talking to them, and bringing them to our side. So I'm going to continue to work for a safe place. Because eventually, <laughs> let me tell you what else you've done. Because you deserve to know things you've done. You know, it was hard passing the DREAM Act back in 2010. It took a lot of work. 218 to 208, I remember. And what the thing I remember most about that vote was how hard, how many Democrats we lost. We lost about 30 to that vote. And there were a lot of Democrats that Oh, they were reluctant to vote. But you know what? How powerful we are? You have a solid base in the House of Representatives. You know how I know? When Steve King proposed mm -hmm. that funding the DREAM Act and taking away the power of the president to use that discretion, 198 out of 201 Democrats said no, hell no. And we didn't have to whip them, and we didn't have to organize them, and we didn't do anything. It just came from their hearts. You want to know why? Because you have created already an instinctive spirit for justice in the Democratic Party. And that base is the base you used in the Senate, and it is the base that we will use in the House of Representatives. So build with me the capacity for 218 votes. I will build a bipartisan space for people to come to. In the end, the clock is ticking, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. The clock is ticking. Please put your nation and your country ahead of your party. That was what November 6th was about. They don't want a Republican solution. They don't want a Democratic solution. They want an American solution to our broken immigration system. And I'm here dedicated to you to get it done. Thank you so much.